So let's look at another property. <coughs> Let me look at some terminology here. The central angle. A central angle is an angle that's subtended at the center of a circle by two given points on the circle. Now, what the heck does that mean? Well, basically what we have is we have a line here. And then we can see in the picture here, we have a line that goes from the edge of the circle to the center and then back to the edge of the circle. And the angle in the center is called the central angle, the angle that's cut out there. Now, if we have a chord AB, and the chord AB would be right here, and we have another chord DE, and we're told that those two chords are equal length, what we now know is that the angle formed by DOAE must be the same as the angle formed by AOE. Angle 1 must equal angle 2. Because the same angle, or sorry, the same chord is subtended by an angle. So the only way that can happen is if these angles are identical. So we know that the, if the chords are equal, the angles are equal, and that also tells us that the arcs, and the arc would be along the edge of the circle from AB, arc AB and arc DE are equal. Now arc can either be written as arc like that or we sometimes have arcs with these curved symbols over top to indicate their circles. That's called the central angle. And again, you just want to think about it coming from the center of a circle. Now let's use this in an example. Well, here we have a central angle and we have to find out what angle one is. What's the central angle formed? Now here's the thing about central angles, which is always going to be true. The central angle is always going to be an isosceles triangle. Because from the center of the circle to the edge is always the radius. There's no other way we can get this. So this is R and this is R, which means these two lengths have to be the same. Now, if we have an isosceles triangle where those two lengths are the same, then we know that this angle up here must be 50 degrees. That's a property of isosceles triangles. So if those two angles equal 50 and it's a triangle, then we can jump to a conclusion with very little calculation, just some deductive reasoning using our, geomet or using our geometry, that angle one must equal 80 degrees. 50 and 50 is 100. 180 degrees in a triangle minus 100 degrees is what angle one is equal to, and so it must equal 80 degrees. And that's what you're going to find with most of these geometry questions, is it's not difficult mathematically as far as calculations go. Often you can do the calculations in your head. Uh, it's just a matter of seeing the picture and being able to decipher the geometry from the picture. So let's look at another angle, an inscribed angle. An inscribed angle is an angle in a circle with a vertex on the circle itself. And this is what we call an inscribed angle. What this means is we go from the edge of the circle, cross the circle, and back to the edge. And the angle formed in between, this angle right here, is the inscribed angle. So let's just say inscribed angle is that thing right there, whatever that measure is. So the inscribed angle is different from a central angle because it goes from the edge of the circle, not to the center, but to the other side of the circle. Now here's a property of inscribed angles. If two inscribed angles subtend the same arc or chord, then the measures, the angle measures are equal. If we look down here, <coughs> we have two inscribed angles. Well, I'm just going to show you with these, some color here. We have one inscribed angle that goes from A to U and then U to B. And it inscribes the chord AB. 
Now, any other inscribed angle that subtends that chord or cuts that chord has to be the same angle measure. Well, we can clearly see here if we go A, V, B, we are subtending that same chord. So that tells us that the angles that are inscribed must be equal. So these two angles have to be the same length. And that's what this tells us here. Since angle AUB subtends AB and AVB subtends AB, then angle AUB and angle AVB are equal. They must be the same. So that's what we're going to be looking for as well if we're trying to solve these problems. We're going to be looking for inscribed angles that subtend the same arc or same chord. So let's look at this example. We have a circle. We have some inscribed angles. There's no central angle. And we're given some information. So right away, let's draw in what we know, put in the information we know. This angle right here is 142 degrees. OK. Angle 2 we know is 100 degrees. We always want to start off with what is easiest. Now, in this case, we need to find 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now, 3 might not be the easiest, even though it's the next one down. Right away, if we look here, we have angle 1 is 142. And we have angle 4 that are along the same line. And we know that angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So right away, angle 4 plus angle 1 must equal 180 degrees. If angle 1 is 142 degrees, then we can jump right to knowing that angle 4 is 38 degrees. Okay, So we know that that is 38 degrees. Now, what else do we know? Well, let's look for some angles subtending the same arc or subtending the same chord. I'm just going to clear these things so we can see the angles. And let's make sure put this answer back in because we know this. This is 38 degrees. We know that angle three, well, let's say angle three, why not? A or C A B subtends this chord right here. So we can also find that CDB subtends that same chord. So we know that 6 and 3, angle 6 and angle 3, must be the same. Well, that's 1. So we know that 6 and 3 have to equal the same. I'm going to erase all that again. And here's another one. We know that A, C, D subtends this big arc uh, all the way around here. That arc right there. Now, any other chord, or sorry, any other inscribed angle that subtends that same arc must be the same measure. So we know that this angle right here is subtending that same chord. So we know right away that angle 5 must equal angle 2. Now that's going to come in really handy because we know that angle 5 must equal angle 2. That's what we just determined. So that must equal 100 degrees. We already determined that angle 4 is 38 degrees. And we know that 6 equals 3 and 3 equals 6. So all we have to do is now figure out one of the other angles, and we have this problem solved. Well, let's look at this triangle. We know 4 is 38. We know 5 is 100. So when we add those two together and add 6, we need to get 180. So it's just a simple calculation from that triangle. 
at 180 degrees minus 38 degrees minus 100 degrees is going to equal angle 6, which we know also equals angle 3. So 180 minus 38 minus 100 is 42 degrees, which makes angle 3 42 degrees. So fairly straightforward. We just have to be able to see those angles. So we're going to be looking for triangles, angles on a straight line, inscribed angles. We're eventually going to start working at looking at central angles and all these properties together and just trying to determine how to solve these circles.